Hey team, Dr. Jack Audie here, and in the previous few videos I've been jumping into statistics. How do we do it? What is it? Is it cool? The answer is yes. Now I'm going to jump into how to actually do some statistics. Now we're going to use a stats software program called Jamovi. Now Jamovi is fantastic for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's free. Number two, it's open source. And number three, um, it's very easy to use. It's a point and click statistical software. So you can just use your mouse, navigate around. How do you do a t-test? How do you do a one-way in? all very easy. It's also incredibly powerful. Um, and the reason why it's powerful is the engine under the hood. Now the engine under the hood of Jamovi is a stats program called R. Now R is a coded stats software. So you type in the instructions. It's not a point and click stats software. Now R is under the hood of Jamovi. Now R is what most clinical trials, most epidemiological data sets, most meta-analyses, most RNA-seq analyses, R is the stats program analyzing those kinds of data sets. Um, R is used ubiquitously throughout all of research, and it's a really good thing to learn if you plan on becoming a scientific researcher. If you're gonna get a PhD and become a scientist, I really recommend learning R. But a great place to start is Jamovi. It's a little introduction to it. And actually in the next video, I'm gonna jump into how you can actually do a little bit of R just straight through Jamovi. Anyway, let's jump into Jamovi because that's what we're going to look into today. It's a great starting point. Um, how do you get it? Well, you can just type into Google Jamovi. You type that into Google and you'll see Jamovi. It's, you can see a download little button there and you'll be able to download it for Windows um, or um, Mac if you use Mac or Linux. Very easy to install. Um, I've already installed it. Now we're going to need a data set. Um, so I actually have a data set here. Um, now, uh, so there's a link down in the description um, which you can click on so you can download the data set and follow along. So here, here we go. If you click it on, it's actually just a Dropbox link. Now you can click open with Excel um, and now it will open up in Excel. So here's the data here in Excel. Now it's a lot. We've got 200 different rows there. Now why do we have so many rows? Well, that's to do with the way we format data for Jamovi, and it's actually the same for R, and it's for most major stats programs. We use what's called long format. So you might think, say you've got two groups, drug and placebo, you might think you put those in separate columns, right? A graph for drug, a graph plus for placebo, you put those in separate columns. That's wide format, we don't do that for stats, and I'll explain why um, for, for, for large important statistics like Jamovi, um, or R stats software, or SPSS, we don't use the wide format, we use the long format, and I'll explain why. So this is how the long format works. The long format actually has a column dictating what treatment <clears throat> sorry, the data belongs to. So as we scroll down, we can see halfway, the treatment switches from placebo to drug. And that's because in long format, each row represents a patient or an experimental replicate or a biological replicate. So typically, um, um, that's what we find in each row. So each row represents a patient in this data set. Now this data set is an imaginary clinical trial of placebo versus drug, and we're looking at viral load here um, in column B. Now viral load is how many viral particles there are, um, in, in say the nasal cavity, and this might be SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 for example, and this number here would be uh, a 10 to the power of, so you can imagine 10 to the power of 6.73 would be the number of viral particles in this person's nasal cavity. Now over here we've got oxygen saturation, so it's at 93%, that's the oxygen saturation. Again, this is just imaginary data, so don't get too hung up on it. Um, but this is one of the, you should be able to immediately see one of the benefits of the wide format. If one row is a patient, and we can see that this row here, this patient received placebo, that's their viral load, that's their oxygen saturation. This is a different patient, that's their viral load, and that's their oxygen saturation here. Now what you can see immediately by the long format is we can actually have multiple dependent variables over here. So we could have another column of blood pressure, we could have another column of age, we could have another column of weight, we could have another column dictating comorbidities. And so you can see how this is a really great way to lay out your data because you can find out a lot about a single patient. You can sort of store all the information of a single patient in a really easy to manage format. 
So if they were in se- if they were if the placebo and drug were in separate columns, you can see that that gets very difficult. But in this way, it becomes incredibly easy. So now we can open up Jamovi. You can just come down here after you've installed it and type out Jamovi. But I've already done that, so it's over here. This is what Jamovi looks like. It's a beautiful um, uh, graphical interface here. You can see very nicely designed. Now over here we have uh, where we're going to put in some data. Um, and our results will appear over here into the panel there. Um, so this is where we're going to put our data. And you can see there's lots of little buttons up the top here to do some of the statistical tests you will be familiar with and I have mentioned. So how do we get the data over? The easiest way is to just copy and paste. Now an important point here, don't copy the column headers. Just copy the data across. You have to enter the column headers in separately in Jamovi. You don't have to do that for something like R, but you do have to do it for Jamovi. So I'm going to copy all of that over to here. Now when I copied it, you'll probably notice that these little icons over here change. Now we've got little rulers and over here we've got little colors. Well, if you double click on one of those, you can actually bring down the information about that column. Now you can change the attributes of a column. Now there's two main types of attributes that we really care about. One is nominal, which is a really bad name, right? Ominal. Uh, nominal is another name for it is categorical. And basically it's saying that this data is full of nouns. <laughs> That's the easiest way to say it. So it's, a, it's got placebo or treatment. There's no numerical value to any of it. Nominal means categorical, which is why it's got these little symbols here, colors. Colors are another way to think about it. So red, blue, green, or placebo versus drug. I guess it could be an adjective. I guess the key is that it's words. So after I've double clicked on uh, my column, I can actually change the title now. So I'm gonna type in treatment there. Um, that's my uh, title. Now over here, B, this is actually a continuous variable. So this is a numerical variable that can theoretically take on any sort of value there. Um, and so that's why it's a continuous variable. Most things we measure are continuous. There are a few things which are counts, um, and that would come under ordinal. But in general, your stats aren't going to go wrong too bad if you load up numbers as continuous. Now, if we remember, this was viral load. Now, an important point, you can't put any spaces in here, right? You may want to put some something down in the description that doesn't uh, affect anything. But over here, you really just, um, uh, you can't put any spaces in the title. And that's because when Jamovi passes the information off to the code R underneath, you know, the R stats program underneath, um, it can't handle that space. So um, it's just one of those things that we're kind of stuck with. And it's one of the shortcomings of Jamovi, but hopefully um, they fix that soon in the future. Um, now this was oxygen, saturation, saturation. And again, we've got no space there. And uh, an important point is when you copy your data in, just make sure it's all in the right format. If I accidentally say in one of these cells in my Excel spreadsheet, there was a letter um, in, in the viral load, perhaps NA, which is typically used for missing data. If there was an NA there, suddenly the variable would be loaded as a nominal variable or a categorical variable. And that's because that letter tells the program it's not numbers. So you've just got to check after you've copied and pasted, make sure you've got um, everything loaded up correctly. This is, should be circles and this should be uh, rulers along the sides there. Okay, now that we've got the uh, data in here, we're actually ready to do some analyses. So what kind of analyses do we want to do? Well, probably the first one we want to do is a t-test, right? We've got two groups. That's incredibly easy, right? So we've got placebo um, and we've got um, drug. That's two groups. So let's run a t-test. So you could go up here. Now, the, remember, there's a few different kinds of t-tests. Um, a paired t-test is when... Um, uh, is when is it when it's the same data when it's the same individual or experimental replicate that you're measuring twice so that's not a placebo controlled trial that might be a before and after trial so let's say we've got a patient they're not doing very well and they have covid-19 we give them the drug see if they improve now we've got a before measure and an after measure of the same patient. So now you can see that the data is paired. But this data is not. We've got a placebo treated group of patients and we've got a drug group of patients. So that's independent data. So we're going to do an independent sample t-test down here. 
Let me just uh, hide that. Okay, so um, this is the layout that we get, and this is a really typical uh, layout for all the little menus that we see in Jamovi. Now, a dependent variable, remember, that's uh, the, the variable that's supposed to depend on the explanatory variable. That's the y-axis, right? So uh, in the y-axis, we probably want to put viral load. Now, the grouping variable, that's the explanatory variable. That's how we're going to break up the data. Over there, we put treatment. So you can actually drag it. Um, but it's easier to just click this little arrow across. So now we've got a uh, viral load by treatment and we can immediately see it's already done it over there, right? So it's given us our T statistic there, our degrees of freedom, which you should all be familiar with now, um, and our P value over there. So viral load is statistically significant, very statistically significant. Now there's a bunch of other options down here that I don't really want to go into. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I haven't really come, uh, I haven't really covered some of the assumption checks for you. Um, one little assumption check, let's just do an example. You can click down here. This is called a QQ plot. This tests to see if it's normally distributed. Now, ideally, all the dots would be on this line if it's normally distributed. And we can see, oh, oh no, hang on. There we go. <laughs> uh, all the dots should be on this line if it was normally distributed. And we can see we've got a slight departure of normally distributed. But that's just one of those assumptions of statistical tests. And you can do those little tests there, which is good. Um, everything else you probably want to keep the same. You can do little things like put in a descriptive plot. And that will show us our little graph here of the viral load. So you can actually see... Um, again, my head is in the way. Um, so if I've clicked on a descriptive plot down there, that will um, draw up a little descriptive plot. Um, and this is the uh, mean plus the 95% confidence intervals um, of drug and placebo. And you can immediately see looking at that, it's going to be statistically significant. And now you can actually copy that graph if you want and put it somewhere else like in Adobe Illustrator. And here is our statistics right there. Now, to get back to the data, you just click on data, and you'll notice this actually hasn't gone anywhere. Now, if I want to change any of the um, factors of this, I can just double click on it, and I can get back. So maybe I want to look at my effect size. Um, and so now it will tell me a Cohen's D, which is an effect size, and it tells us 3.34, which means it's a very big effect. <laughs> that's three standard deviations. That's massive. Anyway, so that's just an important point. Now let's jump back to our data by clicking up here on the data one. Now, um, another cool thing that we could do is we could go uh, t-test and we could run um, a different one. Now, you can actually jump both of them across here. So now both dependent variables are over here, oxygen saturation and viral load. And now over here, I've got my grouping variable, which is treatment. So just telling it to break it up. And what we can see here is it's now run two separate statistical tests, t-tests, and it's told me the p-value of each one. So uh, it's a great way to do multiple t-tests, right? You can do a t-test for each column and it's a very fast way to do the stats. Now, again, if I was to click on descriptive plot there, it's going to bring up both graphs. So um, here we have oxygen saturation, and we can see that drug has statistically significantly improved oxygen saturation. And down here we can see viral load is dramatically decreased by drug. Again, this is just an imaginary drug. It doesn't actually correspond to anything in the real world. But that's just how to do some of those stats tests. Now, what, are, what is another kind of stats test we might want to do on that data? Well, another one might be uh, regression. So we might want to do a linear regression. Now that's going to correlate two continuous variables. So we're not going to break it up by group. We're going to correlate two continuous variables. So our dependent variable might be oxygen saturation and our explanatory variable might be viral load. Now we pop that over in the covariate box down there. And so this is going to see, does oxygen saturation correlate with viral load? Now, um, as we come over here, we can see a very, uh, oh, I've done it again. Here we go, my head keeps getting in the way. So we've got a statistically significant p-value there. Now the estimate um, tells you the direction of the relationship. So we've got a negative 1.8, which means um, as viral load goes up, oxygen saturation goes down. Now, if we want to see that relationship, 
Um, there's loads of different things you can do with a linear regression. Um, we can check assumptions again, and we could do that QQ plot again. Um, and this is testing for normality. Now that's horrible. That looks like we're violating our assumptions, but that's okay. Um, that's not important for this kind of analysis. So you might want to do a transformation or something uh, to get that back to normality. Um, but that's just an example of one of the cool things you can do in Jamovi. If you unclick it, it disappears to keep it nice and tidy. But estimated marginal means is what you want to do if you want to have a look at the regression. What does the regression actually look like? Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say this is the estimated mean um, based on the statistical model that you've put on this data. And that's the confidence of your um the confidence, the 95% confidence interval of those estimated means. So here you can see the relationship very easily. You can see that viral load, um, as viral load increases, now remember this is 10 to the power of 10, so that's one with 10 zeros after it. This is 10 to the power of four, so that's one with four zeros after it. You can see as viral load increases, oxygen saturation decreases. Right, so I think that's a fantastic place to stop. That was just a quick introduction on how to do um, two very simple statistical analyses um, in Jamovi.